In the first scene of the film, two black males who appear like they were recently released from prison are being auctioned off while wearing expensive underwear. They are restrained by the neck chains, giving the impression that they are at a slave market. The film then returns to the beginning of the story in a flashback. The story centers on Regis and Joel Grotesier, two half-brothers from the West Indies who have grown apart and now live quite different lifestyles. Joel is a monorassic black man who has recently been released from jail for the theft of an elderly lady's pocketbook. The two of them currently share a home with his mother and his daughter, who is nine years old. He has been unemployed several times, and he always gives racism the blame. On the other hand, he has never actively sought employment. However, Regis is a biracial guy of European and African ancestry. He is a happily married man with a white wife and a daughter of nine years. He settled into middle-class life in a prosperous community. Regis is currently employed as the mayor's aide at the municipal hall. Regis's uncle calls him one day to tell him that their ailing father would like nothing more than to see each of his children before he passes away. As a result of his absenteeism during Regis's formative years, Regis has little respect for his scofflaw father. After that, he has supper with his family, but his crazy wife threatens to sleep with other men if he doesn't pay his father one final visit beforehand. With nowhere else to turn, he gives in unwillingly. The next day, Regis flies back to his hometown, where his father still dwells. He meets his brother Joel, who has also traveled from New York to be with their dad at the airport. The siblings, who haven't spoken in over a decade, agree to put their differences aside and share a taxi. On the way to their dad's house in a cab, the two siblings meet up. While Joel is too ashamed to admit his own failings to Regis, he is happy to hear everything about Regis's accomplishments. As soon as they arrive at their father's house, they are greeted by their aunt and the other half sisters. Their father, it seems, traveled extensively and slept with many women throughout the world. This clarifies the racial differences between Joel and Regis. The sight of his two boys brings a glow to the elderly man's face. He promises Regis and Joel a huge treasure before he passes away. The brothers are elated by this news and can't wait to learn more about the wealth. Unfortunately, all they get from their forefathers is an emancipation certificate. These papers were awarded to a select group of slaves by their masters in recognition of exceptional service. Apparently, the ancestors of both Regis and Joel were set free long before slavery was outlawed in the West Indies. Yet they make light of the inheritance, disregarding its symbolic significance. They laugh at the paper and rip it up in front of their aunt, who is very upset with them for disrespecting their late uncle. This, predictably, infuriates the elderly lady, who then resolves to impart some wisdom upon the miscreant youth. She puts them under a voodoo spell that transports them to the 17th century. When slavery was commonplace, when the following scene begins, Regis and Joel are awakened to find themselves in a field wearing nothing but their fancy underwear. As the two are puzzling over what transpired, two black individuals flee by them in fear. The Grotesier brothers are captured at precisely that moment by a pair of slave hunters, and then they're off to the slave market, where they'll be sold to landowner Monsieur Jourdan. While Regis is sent to the cooks of the mansion. Joel is sent to the farms to work for Henri, a cruel and extremely prejudiced supervisor. The half brothers quickly realize that they have been transported to the year 1780, when slavery is still legal. The following day, the priest is brought in to preach to the slaves, who are made to listen while he reads from a false Bible that instructs them to submit to the white masters. However, the Grotesier brothers, who are the only people in the village other than the whites who can read, are adamantly opposed to its contents. Even more surprisingly, Regis reads the priest a sentence from the book. After a late start to the day, Joel is knocked down by Henri on the field. Sick of Henri's abuse, Joel tries to flee the farm, but on his way out, he falls and hits his head on a pole, knocking himself unconscious. Because of what he did, he is publicly shamed. Later that same day, Regis is summoned to Monsieur Jourdan's office to have his reading skills officially recognized. For his intelligence, Rodan promotes him to co-master of the slaves together with Henri. Meanwhile, Rosalie, a female slave, is tending to Joel's wounds. Even though they've only known each other for a few minutes, Joel has developed feelings for her. Right as he thinks he is her, he goes in for a kiss and is rejected. To Joel's dismay, Rosalie then admits that she has fallen in love with another slave named Isidore. The next day, Regis begins carrying out his new responsibility by directing and controlling the activities of other slaves. 
Astounded by his brother's white-like behavior, Joel accuses him of being self-centered. But Regis doesn't care, and he stays faithful to his new owners by constantly updating Monsieur Jourdan on his progress. When the rest of the white family learns that Regis can read, they start making fun of him. They make fun of him for not knowing how to play the piano as well. Everyone is shocked to hear Regis play the piano so well. But the whites respond with a brutal whipping for him once he does this. In the end, Regis decides he's had enough, and the next morning, he and his brother steal away from the plantation in the carriage of a Jewish man named Isaac. When they go to Isaac's residence, he comes up to them and says that he was aware of their presence the whole time. The brothers beg him for compassion, but Isaac unexpectedly takes excellent care of them, explaining that Jews are also victims of prejudice. Henchmen working for Monsieur Jourdan show up at Isaac's house shortly afterward, looking for the two brothers. Regis and Joel bade Isaac good night and escaped via the rear door. They travel to the coast, where they find a discarded boat and set sail. In a comical twist, they see a vessel carrying slaves to an auction and are subsequently captured and imprisoned. Each brother of Grotesir eventually winds up in the same slave market, where they are purchased by Jordan's goons. Thankfully, an African group known as the Maroons rescue the brothers on their trip back to the plantation. In this section, we learn that everyone in the tribe was a slave at one point until they managed to escape. The two are accepted into the tribe and join the tribal chief in chanting. Even if the Maroons shout about killing white people, Regis, who is married to a white woman, would not join in. The brothers have provoked the wrath of the tribe, and the villagers have turned on them without delay. Happily, though, Regis and Joel are able to evade the tribe and make it to safety. After waking up in an unfamiliar environment the next day, the two of them are confronted by their aunt, who puts a spell on them. The brothers quickly figure out that she was the one who sent them back in time. They beg her to break the enchantment, saying they are willing to sacrifice anything to make it happen. The grandmother first says no, but as the brothers persist, she gives them a hint. She explains that they can't return to the present unless they find the plantation and reunite Isidore and Rosalie, their ancestors. Without providing any more context, she also instructs them to rectify the error. The woman disappears after telling the brothers to smoke her unique pipe when they have accomplished their objective. While Joel and Isidore are discussing possible solutions to the problem, Joel has a startling flashback to when he saw what appeared to be oral intercourse between Isidore and another guy. In addition, he has filmed the whole thing on his phone and presented it to Regis. The two brothers eventually come to assume that the wrong they are meant to correct is that Isidore is gay. Joel and Regis had returned to the plantation in the following scene. It doesn't work out for them, so they try to bargain with Monsieur Jourdan about their sentence. They are instead branded with the plantation's insignia. When they're ready, they head back to their shelters to plot their next move. The white guests at Monsieur Jourdan's daughter's wedding are currently partying it up inside the estate. Aware of their opportunity, the brothers throw a celebration for the slaves. They sneak into the distillery and steal a cask of rum to get Isidore and Rosalie drunk and start dating. But their scheme backfires when Regis catches Joel, who is hopelessly in love with Rosalie, making kisses with her in public. The two brothers then improvise and physically assist the dozing couple in engaging in intercourse. As soon as this is finished, they will feel confident that their goal in going there has been met. As they are under the impression that they are free to return home any time they like, the brothers plot their revenge on the whites. They force their way inside the mansion and humiliate everyone who lives there. While Regis begins breaking furniture and even slapping a white guy, Joel kisses Monsieur Jourdan's daughter. Henri enters the room suddenly, brandishing a rifle, and threatens the brothers. Nonetheless, neither Regis nor Joel seem to be frightened, and they both go ahead and smoke from the pipe. Unfortunately, it has no effect when they smoke it. The elderly woman's magical pipe seems to have been switched out for a regular one. Due to their actions, they have been placed in solitary confinement and will be executed the following day. Later that night, both brothers become reflective and melancholy about their decisions in life. While Joel admits to being unemployed and cash-strapped, Regis laments the demise of his own marriage. A few hours later, with the brothers still comforting one another, Henri shows up to lead them to the field where they would be executed by hanging. However, just before the execution, Victor, Monsieur Jourdan's son, escapes into the woods because he cannot bear to see his father put to death. When Rosalind gives pursuit, she discovers that he has fallen into the river. Everyone in the household is in a state of fear and rushes to the scene. 
Isidore, however, uses the chaos to his advantage by rescuing the brothers and knocking out Henri in the process. They comply with his instruction to flee for their lives. The boys are running away when they come discover Victor being carried downstream by the current. The two rush into the raging river without a second thought. Contrary to Regis's expectations, Joel is not a strong swimmer. It's already a tough job, and now he has to rescue his brother while also protecting Victor from harm. After the brothers save the life of Monsieur Jourdain's kid, he is so appreciative that he decides to let them go. Similarly to what their late father gave to them, the half-brothers also receive an emancipation certificate. Instead of accepting their freedom and prize, they ask Monsieur Jourdain to set Isidore and Rosalie free and provide them the paperwork. Despite his confusion, the Monsieur complies with the request. The brothers have thus freed Isidore and Rosalie, but they have yet to discover the location of the magical pipe necessary to return to the present day. As the days go by they begin to face the possibility that they will never be able to go home again. Once the brothers have said their goodbyes, Isidore and Rosalind take the paperwork and depart the property. Henri walks over to the pair as they stand there watching them depart and tells them to get back to work. He pulls out his pipe and lights up. Henri is shocked when the brothers vanish as he tries to embarrass them by blowing smoke in their faces. As a result, it's safe to assume that Henri was the one who stole the pipe. Next, the boys are brought back to the present, where their aunt is standing beside them. Regis and Joel are relieved to see her with the original paperwork in hand. Months go by. Joel gets a steady work on a construction site, but he continues to whine about getting paid the bare minimum because of his race. At the same time, Regis goes back to his duties at the municipal building. On his way out of the building one day, he exchanges pleasantries with the mayor, who in turn tells him a racially insensitive joke. Not being the same man he used to be, Regis chooses to stand up to the mayor and then storms off. Regis, his wife, Joel, and Joel's mother are then shown speaking in Regis's living room. They both feel that the experience they shared together as a family strengthened their bond. However, the emancipation papers are ripped to shreds after an altercation between the girls. The film concludes with Regis and Joel desperately trying to catch up to their girls.